Welcome, everyone. So uh, today on the podcast, I'm uh, I'm going to be live streaming this one, just like I did my last one. Uh, the topic that I have chosen is hiking in Japan, something I've done a little bit of. And I'll probably um, talk about some other things too, especially with the uh, the viewer chat as well, if anyone has any questions or, or topics they'd like uh, to hear about or talk about, uh, I will be um, monitoring that as well. But I'll talk a little bit about my uh, my hiking experiences, and I have a um, an interesting uh, story that happened to me a few years ago. So, without further ado, let's uh, let's get this podcast started. Okay. All right, guys. So uh, today's uh, topic, as I said before, is, 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 is uh, hiking. Oh, hey, we have Sub Wolf. Hello, Sub Wolf. Yeah, black screen to start it off for the intro, but you got me now. So um, I'm going to start off uh, talking a little bit about uh, hiking in Japan and what got me into it. And uh, if you don't really know. Uh, hiking is is one of the um, J- Japan is uh, is one of the better countries I've found uh, to go hiking in. It just has such natural uh, beauty uh, that you can just find almost anywhere in this country. Um, it's you know uh, a lot of people's image of Japan is you know uh, Tokyo, the big city, and everything, but majority of Japan is uh, it's quite a quite rural and uh, has lots of beautiful forest and lots of beautiful uh, landscape around. So um, that that in itself leads the country to be a great one to explore. So um, I just to start off, before I moved to Japan, I, I wasn't really too much of a hiker. I enjoyed the outdoors and camping a little bit, but I'm I never really went uh, hiking too much, but uh, you know I would I would do it occasionally, and you know in in Texas, I find North Central Texas while it has its own beauty, it's just not uh, for me. It's not that fun to go around um, hiking there. I mean I, I've I grew up there, so I've seen it all. I, I feel like, but when I moved here, um, a coworker. At uh, the job I worked at at the time, he he was really into hiking, and um, he invited me to to go hiking. Uh, invited a few of us to go hiking with him, and that was my first uh, hiking experience in Japan. I believe I climbed Mount Shibutsu, which is in Gunma Prefecture, and uh, that's what got me started on on a on a hiking uh, on a love of of hiking and in, in the nature of Japan. Um, first time I'd ever climbed uh, a mountain before so by the end of the day I was really dead tired um, but it was rewarding enough to where I uh, I really wanted to, to do it again and again and again um, Japan has a um, hundred famous mountains it actually has thousands of mountains but there are 100 famous mountains they call the Hyaku Meizan that a lot of uh, hikers will uh, try and strive to, to to climb. And I've climbed, so far I've climbed only about five. So I have about 95 of these mountains to, to go. Uh, the ones I've, I've done are Shibutsu, uh, Adatara in Fukushima Prefecture, um, another Nishi Azu, Azumayama in Fukushima, Mount Nantai in Tochigi, really close to where I live, and uh, Shirane 
uh, also on the Gunma and Tochigi border. And there's there's one more that uh, no no I think that that's it that's that's the five that I've climbed uh, so far. But uh, I have climbed other smaller mountains that aren't part of the uh, the Hyakume zone. Um, each one has its own charm and its own uh, beauty to it. Uh, actually, I've recorded a lot of my uh, my hiking trips on video, and you can actually go and and find some really um, rudimentary <laughs> videos that I've made back before uh, or before I was getting better at, at doing YouTube and, and filming um, just with some old cameras that I had. I filmed some of these hikes. So go back uh, through my YouTube channel and you can find, I think, maybe three, three or three or more of the mountains that I've climbed. And there's also um, some other hiking trips that you can find on there as well. But anyway, um, so far, the best mountain that I've climbed has probably, uh, it's, it's a tie. I think it's either Mount Shirane, uh, Nico Shirane, uh, which is the tallest mountain in the Kanto area, or Adatara in um, in Fukushima Prefecture. The reason why I say Adatara is it's a uh, it's a volcano. I'm not sure if it's dormant or or still active, but when you get to the crater, it's it's unlike anything I'd ever seen before. Um, it was just strikingly uh, beautiful compared even compared to the rest of the mountain so you have the base of the mountain which is you know covered in trees like a forest then you start getting above the tree line and um it's kind of grassy and rocky and and you know it looks like that but then all of a sudden near the crater it just changes to you know shades of red and and brown and silver and and white and it just like dips in um it was really something to behold. Uh, so, Adatara well, was quite, quite a good uh, mountain. I climbed. Uh, next was my second favorite, Shirane. Shirane is probably I, I wouldn't say second favorite. I'd say it's probably tied as being my favorite one, and it's it's fairly close to where I live. Um, Shirane is is the tallest in the Kanto region as I said, and I actually took two different paths going up and down this mountain. So the path I took up was I drove to the Gunma side, uh, Gunma prefecture side of the mountain and, and started up that way. And it took me about, I would say, two and a half hours to climb to the top, which is average, I guess, for, for a lot of uh, mountains in Japan. Um, this one was a little bit challenging near the top though because um, once you get above the tree line it, it gets extremely uh, steep the mountain got extremely steep and there were parts where I actually had to um, had to climb over uh, boulders to get through the path and it was um, if you're not in decent shape climbing this mountain is probably not a good idea However, I did see some, a few older people and even a dog. So it's not impossible. It's not impossible. But I will say if you have any knee or leg issues, then this is something that you would regret immediately um, trying to do. But uh, I got to the top. And unfortunately, I didn't leave early enough uh, to get to when I got to the top of this mountain. It wasn't a cloudy day, but it was later enough in the day to where some clouds moved in and blocked a really good view of uh, that you could get from the top of the mountain. It was still sunny at the top, but a mountain that high, you sh should be able to see all the way to um, Tokyo easily and, and see Tokyo, but I wasn't able to do that because of the cloud cover. It was high enough to where you could s see a little bit of the um, curvature of the earth. So that's that's really interesting if you've never been high enough um like in a plane or or on a mountain or anything to see the slight curvature of the earth it's it's really something kind of trippy to look at um and 
anyone anyone out there who's into the uh, the flat Earth uh, bullshit that's around on the internet right now, just have them climb up to um, to the top of a any tall mountain. So, uh, let's see. Oh, hey, we got uh, another viewer in. Uh, what's your favorite hiking trail in Japan? Um, I haven't done many trails. I've just mainly done a lot of mountains, but um, I think uh, Oze, Oze uh, is is really a, a great place to to go hiking. Uh, that's at kind of near the base of uh, Shibutsu, where I, where I went to climb, or at least you could see Oze from uh, Shibutsu. Um, there's all sorts of uh, hiking trails throughout Japan. Um, I haven't really done a lot of those, but that uh, is something that I'd like to do. Anyway, um, top of the top of Shirane was was great, and I decided to take a different way down the mountain. Just you know, I had time to kill, so I figured why not. And as I said, it took me about two and a half hours to climb up the mountain. On the way down, by the time I got back to the starting point where my car was, it was probably four and a half to five hours after I left the summit. So uh, it actually took twice as long to go down the mountain as it did climb up. And actually at one point, just when I thought that I was at the bottom, I hit a, a really flat area, lots of grass and, and everything. Turns out there were still lots of mountain left to, to go down. And um, uh, But I went through a bit of a wooded area and then it opened up to this really clear, crisp blue lake, just right on, right on the mountain. And like, if you if you you don't live in a place where you can get really clear water, it's it's crazy to see something like that. I mean, water generally does start to look uh, blue when it's uh, when it's clear. It's not just uh, something that. You see in uh, pictures or whatever you know so you know i'm i'm a little bit uh, i come from texas where all the water's brown all the lake water's brown or green and pretty much all the ocean water's brown for about a mile or so um offshore just because of all the sand so i'm not used to seeing uh, beautiful rivers and beautiful lakes when i do come across it it's quite nice anyway i passed that lake and at this point, I'm extremely uh, tired, extremely tired, but I'm I'm still hiking down the trail to get back to my car, and I see a, a deer grazing in the woods uh, close by, and he's close to the trail, he or she is close to the trail that I'll be uh, hiking on, and I notice the closer and closer I get, the deer's not moving at all. I mean... She's eating grass and she's moving her head around and looking around, but she's not moving her position. And I could have just gone up and pet this deer and it wouldn't have uh, blinked an eye at me. It wouldn't have thought I was anything different. She she wasn't following me, looking for a handout of food, nor was she scared and, and jittery and running away. So this, this uh, deer was clearly used to people, but not to the point where... Uh, she would take food from you. Either that or she was just completely unfazed by by human presence. So I um you know, said a little uh salutation to, to her and then I uh continued down uh the rest of the way. But that's a that's a you know fairly uh normal normal story. I did almost fall off a mountain uh, a few years ago here in Japan and it was because I was very ill prepared for the mountain that I was going to climb and I say that uh, because at the time I didn't really have too much experience with climbing mountains and the time of the year it was I wasn't expecting to encounter some of the things that I did so uh, roll back a few years I'm climbing with some friends where we went to Nishi Azumayama Mountain uh, in uh, Fukushima Prefecture, I believe. And this is in June. It's in the month of June. 
it's uh it's not hot outside but you know it's it's fairly warm but just in case you know i wore um blue jeans and a light uh, jacket just in case i got cool at the top which it's usually cooler at the top of the mountains and i um so i i thought okay some nice um some nice jeans little jacket backpack with uh, lunch should be okay to go right well the first uh the first half of the mountain was was fine except um we we climbed up a trail that was kind of like a ski slope because uh in the winter time it's used as a as a ski mountain but uh, we were climbing up the ski slope then we started getting into the woods and around this time there were the the most giant like um I guess you could describe them as horse flies. They're just giant flies that were just buzzing all around. And I'm not talking about like a little, like a cloud of house flies that you would walk into, which is gross enough. I mean, these things were, um, how do I say, maybe about the size of a small bullet or something. That's how big these suckers were. And there weren't just four or five spinning around your head at the at the same time. There were like 20. So it was... Um, it's pretty gross. Pretty gross having all those things. You, you you know your fear is you don't want to open your mouth while talking and have them go, you know, like fly into your throat. So, um, luckily those those little bastards didn't last too long. But trying to avoid them, we kind of got turned around in the woods and got a little lost. Um, we were still able to find our way back to the trail, which is cool. A little bit of lost time. Um, once the big trouble though started once we got above the tree line I was thinking June there's not going to be anything um, perilous on the mountain other than you know having uh, maybe some steep steep sides and maybe uh, maybe a couple of boulders to climb over no uh, even in June the top of this mountain was still covered in snow and this was like an icy sort of slightly melted snow and the shoes that i had were worn out old tennis shoes that even the cleats on the bottom were a bit smoothed out so they weren't um, they weren't even really good for gripping onto anything and the trail that we had to go across was on the side of a of a cliff pretty much that if i made one wrong step I was, I was toast. I was, you know, I would fall two, three hundred meters down to some sharp rocks. And the trail was, you couldn't see the trail because of all the snow. So what we basically had to do was walk sideways against the mountain, hoping to find a trail. And uh, luckily one of our uh, hikers had a, uh, he had some, either some really pleated shoes or he had some actual snowshoes uh, that he'd brought just in case and he he led the way and everyone else just followed his exact footprints if we didn't we you know definitely would have had a a, a chance to fall most likely to our deaths that went on for about 20 to 30 minutes so if you if you can imagine the sort of uh anxiety that kind of goes through your body even just kind of looking down a, a steep slope like that and and walking along the edge of something imagine that for 30 minutes and and keep in mind i'm a i'm afraid of heights at also so this also doubled my uh, my sort of anxiety doing this um that was that was pretty freaky however the worst is yet to come on that front so um, I forgot exactly what happened, but we, we, we got past that certain point, but for some reason, um, I got split up from the group, uh, me and another hiker got split up from the rest of the group. Either they went one trail and we went another or something, but, um, I was able to get to the summit of the mountain, uh, just fine. And this summit was actually quite in a weird location like you you climb up you know some hiking trails and then you see this batch of trees you walk through this little wooded area and then the summit of the mountain is in this like opening in the grove so 
actually, it was a really strange um, place, I thought, for the top of the mountain. Anyway, I made it there, you know, chilled out a little bit. And then on the return back, that's where things started getting a little bit hairy because I didn't have uh, the person that was leading the way with the uh, with the cleats or the snowshoes to <clears throat> to show which which way I should go, and I could visually see where they were at. But in order to get there, me and one other hiker had to figure out how to navigate through this uh, snow and this ice. We didn't have any snowshoes or any cleated shoes. They were just really ill-prepared for that. And um, just one wrong little step, and my shoes were just like slick on the ice. Just, you know, one wrong move, and I'm, I'm gone. And in order to get to the trail where we came from, we had to climb down um, a little sloped area. And uh, with a stick, we kind of made rudimentary steps along the way, but we didn't know how even how deep the snow was. We didn't know if, if it was just a few inches and then we'd fall through or, or not. And we couldn't see where the actual legit uh, hiking trail was. So we took a chance and we slowly, slowly started crawling down uh, or climbing down this, uh, this makeshift trail that we made. And the, the guy I was with, he went ahead and he got to the, the, the bottom of the little slope, found the trail, just waiting on me to come down. And there were like uh, tree branches sticking out of the snow. So I kind of used those for a little bit of leverage. And on the right side of me was the trail, and on the left side it was just the slope kept going down, 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 until eventually there were rocks. <clears throat> so I'm putting one foot in front of the other, <clears throat> and what happens? The uh, my foot just slips out from under me, and I go tumbling down the slope, and if it weren't for two things, I probably would have been dead. Uh, one being a, a big tree branch that kind of broke broke my um, tumble. I was able to hold on to. And then my friend was down um, close enough to grab my leg. And so me holding on to one branch and him holding on to the leg kind of pulled me over to, uh, to the trail. Um, I was really grateful for that uh, because... Uh, who knows what um, what would have happened if he if I was alone or that tree branch wasn't there? So I'm uh, that was probably the most dangerous situation I'd been in on the mountain. And from that point on, no matter what time of the year it was, I was climbing. I always I made sure and I I bought a proper pair of hiking boots after that. And I always prepare um, just in case there's there's a situation like that again. And um, so the most dangerous part was was over, but I still had uh, some interesting uh, things happen. So we're we're far far behind the rest of the group at this point, and they're just probably waiting on us at the bottom. So we we made it back below the uh, the tree line of the mountain. There's still snow and and stuff everywhere. So we were just walking down down the mountain and. Uh, the snow was about knee deep, so we we're just trudging through knee deep snow. Then all of a sudden, I take a step and I just fall through the snow. Um, apparently, there was like a little drop off, but the snow was the same height near the tree, and I I stepped and I fell about six feet down uh, in this kind of somewhat snow. Not really a cave, but uh, part of you know. It kind of collapsed in on itself, and I was able to kind of dig my way out and and get back to the trail. But um, yeah, I ended up also falling through the snow and getting completely soaked. So uh, that was uh, the extent of the uh, adventure on that mountain. Um, and so far, I've I haven't had any um, 
haven't had any scary experiences since then. No bears, no, uh, no anything like that. Uh, let's see. Internationate. Internationate. Uh, what part of Japan do you live in? I live in Tochigi Prefecture, which is about 100 kilometers north of Tokyo. Uh, I live in Utsunomiya. <clears throat> Pretty medium-sized city in Japan, but it's uh, it's close to Nikko. It's close to a lot of nature, so there's a lot of uh, hiking spots around. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, um, yeah, if... if um, you guys have any um, stories that you'd like to share of your hiking experiences? Uh, that'd be great to hear. But uh, for me, I've only been, I've hiked uh, one time this year so far, and I have a few other spots uh, that I'm planning to do this month just to avoid uh, any and all the uh, snow uh, that may have still been on the mountains. So, anyways, uh, that's. That's pretty much it for, for what I have, for what I want to talk about um, in terms of hiking. So a uh, little bit of a short episode this time, but no worries. Uh, I'll see you guys again for the next one. Uh, make sure to uh, like, subscribe, uh, share the videos if you like it on any of your uh, preferred social media outlets. Um, I will... Be, I'll, I'll see if I can try and do this once a week, once a week. And of course, if you guys have any feedback uh, at all about any topics you want me to talk about or any questions you might have, send them to my email, which I'll send below. And uh, I'll address them in the next uh, podcast. Also, uh, you can... Once this stream is done, you can find this episode up on my YouTube channel, but it will also be available on SoundCloud and iTunes when it's, uh, when it's done. So uh, if you would prefer to listen to it on your commute or, or anywhere else, it, you'll have a nice little podcast to, uh, to download as well. So yeah, thanks, thanks you two for uh, joining and listening to my story, and thanks for everyone out there uh, listening ahead of time. Uh, in the future, whenever you're listening to this episode, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys and I'll talk to you guys next time.